All right, guys, welcome back to episode seven of Dark Souls in Unity. So I got my guy here on a platform. I want to show you what happens if we walk off the edge right now currently with our code. So if we just take a little step here off the platform. As you can see, our player doesn't really fall. He just kind of slumps to the ground slowly, and it's not what we want. We want our player to have a force where he falls and towards the ground at, you know, a, a predetermined speed. And we can just also walk around in the air here and roll around. That's not good either. We want to get rid of that want to make it so you can't move in the air and you're just stuck doing a falling animation. Also, if you walk over here towards a staircase, you will see that it kind of gets stuck. And this doesn't just happen with a staircase, it'll happen with any kind of obstacle that you should just be able to walk over. Now to remedy this problem, we're going to use a thing called a floating collider, which is our capsule collider, but it will be floating off of the ground, paired with a ground detection method using Raycast. So I will show you what I mean in the oncoming segments. All right guys, the first thing you wanna do is come down to your capsule collider and you see here where you see the height setting. And when we first made this, we made it so it's just touching the ground. We wanna bring that up just a little bit off the ground so your feet like that are just outside of the collider's radius. And this is gonna be very important when we actually implement our ground detection. So basically this will make it so when we come up to uh, an obstacle like a staircase, we'll just float on over it. All right, we're gonna make two new flags here under player flags. The first one is going to be public bull, it's going to be is in air, and this flag will be active if the player is in the air. The next one is going to be public bull is grounded, and this flag will be active if the player is touching the ground. Next we're going to go to the player locomotion script and make a new header. And this header is going to be for our raycast that it detects the ground, and we're going to call this ground and air detection stats. So we're going to make a few floats here. The first one, serialized field float. It's going to be ground detection ray start point. And that is going to be the starting point of our ray cast uh, where it starts from the player. Next one, serialized field. Whoops. Again, a float. This one's going to be minimum distance needed to begin fall. So basically, the distance needed for the player to actually begin the fall animation. Serialized field floats ground direction ray distance. And this one's just going to be, if necessary, just an offset as to where the ray cast will begin. It might need to be a little bit in front or behind the player, for example, and not directly in the center of the player. Uh, this might not be too important, but uh, depending on what kind of model you have, how big it is, this could be very helpful to you. Next, layer mask ignore for ground check. This is going to be the layers we ignore when we're checking to see if we're grounded. And then public float in air timer. And lastly, under movement stats, we're adding a new stat, and we're going to call this fall speed or falling speed. I'm going to initialize mine at mm, 45. All right, guys, so again, the ground detection ray start point is just where the ray casts will begin. Uh, that's where it's going to start. Because we have a floating collider, we're going to need to move that starting point up to where the floating collider begins. Next, the minimum distance needed to begin fall is the distance you're going to need to actually start beginning uh, the player being in the air and playing a falling animation. And like I said, this is if we need it, we might need to uh, offset the ray cast distance just a little bit in front or behind the player. So if need be, we'll use this. And falling speed is pretty self-explanatory, the speed at which you fall. All right, next, over to late update on player manager. We're going to say if is in air. So if the player is in the air, we're going to say player locomotion dot in air timer is going to equal player locomotion dot in air timer plus time dot delta time. So if you're in the air, we're going to increment that timer and get it to go up. We're going to save that. Next, we're going to go to the start method in our player locomotion script. We're going to say player manager dot is grounded equals true. So this starts off the player as grounded. So you're not playing the falling animation when we start. And then we're going to set our ignore for ground check. So we're going to set the layers we are ignoring for our ground check. Now onto the meat of the video, the fun part. We're going to create our handle falling method. So like the rest, we're going to say public void handle falling, pass the float delta, and we're also going to need to pass a vector three move direction. We're going to say player manager dot is grounded equals false. 
Raycast hit, hit. Vector 3 origin is equal to my transform dot position. Origin dot y is equal to origin dot y plus ground detection ray start point. So it's going to start where our start point has placed it. If physics dot raycast origin my transform forward out hit with a distance of 0 0.4 f we're going to say move direction equals vector 3.0 so if the ray gas comes out and hits something directly in front of you you're not moving next we're going to say if player manager dot is in air rigid body dot add force minus vector 3 dot up that's the same as saying vector 3 dot down i believe times your falling speed so if you are in the air make the player fall at a rate of your falling speed we're also going to say rigid body dot add force move direction times falling speed divided by i'm going to say five and what this is going to do is pretty important is if you leave to walk off an edge it's going to just kick you off a little bit so you don't get stuck on the edge and start falling so think of it as like hopping off the edge with a little bit of force you can change that last number here if you want to actually adjust the force at which you jump off the ledge i think it's a nice effect and i like it a lot you don't need to include it if you don't want to vector three direction is equal to move direction we're going to say direction dot normalize we're going to say origin is equal to origin plus direction times ground distance ground direction ray distance target position is equal to my transform dot position next we're going to make a debug for our draw ray and we're going to say origin minus vector three dot up we're going to give our distance there needed to begin fall and we're going to make it red. So this is just going to actually debug the red, uh, the um, the raycast, sorry, so we can see it in game and make adjustments as needed. I say 0.1f and false. Now, if physics dot raycast come from the origin minus vector three up out hit, we're going to say minimum distance needed to be in fall and ignore for our ground check. Normal vector equals hit dot normal. Vector three, target position is equal to hit dot point. Player manager dot is grounded is equal to true. Target position dot y is equal to target position dot y. So basically, if we're, our raycast comes out and hits something, we are grounded. Now we're going to say if you were in the air at the time that it detected the ground, we need you to play a landing animation. So. We're, gonna, we're only going to play that animation if you were in the air for over 0.5f. So if the air, if an air timer is over 0.5f, we're going to say debug.log, you were in the air for, and we're going to include that in air timer just to see how long we were for bug checking purposes. And then we're going to come down here and say animation handler dot play target animation land. And we're is interacting equals true. Okay. Else, so if you were not in the air for over 0.5f, we're just going to say animation handler dot play target animation, and you're supposed to put locomotion here. I put empty because I mixed up my projects. Um, we're actually not putting in the empty state until the next video, and we're going to reset our in air timer and make it zero again. So you want to put locomotion where I put empty. Player manager dot in air is in air is equal to false. So basically, when you land, you play the landing animation, and then you, you set the player manager dot is in air to false. So then you're back on the ground again. Next, we're going to say if player manager dot is grounded, player manager dot is grounded equals false. So now, if you're grounded when you go into the air, we're going to turn that off. So now you're no longer grounded, and we're going to say if player manager dot is in air equals false. We're going to say if player manager dot is interacting equals false the following animator handler dot play target animation falling we're going to set is interacting to true and then below that we're going to say vector 3 velocity equals rigid body dot velocity then we're going to say velocity dot normalize rigid body dot velocity is equal to velocity times move direction whoops sorry movement speed divided by two player manager 
that is an error equals true. So if you weren't an error, you're gonna play the following animation and then the player manager dot is an error is equal to true now. Lastly, if player manager dot is grounded, say if player manager dot is interacting, input handler dot move amount is greater to zero. My transform dot position is equal to vector three dot lerp between my transform dot position and target tra target position over time dot delta time. Else, my transform dot position is equal to target position. And that's it. Let's save it. All right, guys, on the home stretch here now. So let's go over to the move direction variable here on the player locomotion script. We're actually going to need to make that public because when we call handle falling on our player manager on the update method, you see how it needs the move direction variable. Right now, that's private, so we won't be able to call it. So let's just make that public. Next, we're going to go over here to the update method where we call our player locomotion, and we're going to call player locomotion dot handle falling. We're going to pass the delta, and we're going to say player locomotion dot move direction, and we're going to save that. Okay, now add your falling and landing animations to the game. Drag the landing animation in there and tick off foot IK. Add the reset is interacting script to it under the behaviors and drag it back and connect it to your empty or locomotion. With the falling animation, add reset is interacting on the behaviors, but don't make a connection back to locomotion or empty. I repeat, you don't want a connection with here. You just want it to, just to drag the animation in. There should be no arrow going from it. Okay, next, under handle movement. We do not want the player to be able to move while they're interacting or falling. So we're going to come down here and we're going to say if player manager dot is interacting return. All right, guys, let's jump into game here. We're going to jump off this tower. So we're falling and we play the landing animation, but we kind of shot way too far forward. Now there's a piece of code here in our player locomotion script. If the player is in the air, which we were, it's going to play these two lines of code. And the second one here is going to add force on the direction you left the platform on. And right now it's too much. So let's divide that by, say, 10 instead of 5. That'll cut it in half. Because I want to pop off of the platform a little bit, but not like that much. Now we're going to hit play. We're going to try it again. We're going to walk off forward. And that was a lot better. Perfect. Okay, cool. Now I'm actually going to adjust my falling speed a bit too. You can play with all these values yourself, but I'm going to come down and put mine to 80. I won't play around this too much in the video because this is all, you know, subject to what you're doing. Everyone's probably going to be a bit different. So jump off again, fall a bit faster, play the animation, looks good. I'm liking that. Cool. But you're going to notice something now. Our in-air timer has not reset. So if you walk up here and then we come off the ledge, it plays the falling animation and the landing animation our timer is not resetting. So we forgot to do that somewhere in the code. So here's the culprit. If you jump back in here, copy and paste this, just paste it here under animation dot play target animation land. We forgot to reset it here as well. That empty that I mentioned earlier, I'm going to set that to locomotion because I'm actually going back to the locomotion state, not the empty state. Play. And we're going to jump off and we're going to land and that's fine. We're going to run up these stairs. That's fine. And we're going to pop off the stairs and that's fine. Excellent. Cool guys. So thank you for watching. Please drop a like and a comment. It does help the YouTube algorithm gods decide where my videos go. Thank you for watching. And if you want to check out my Patreon below, I'll see you guys in the next one. A large thank you to Simon, Steve, TTH, and Nico for the support on Patreon. Mm -hmm.